Well, he says it uh, shoots a shade high to the right. I remember. I've made up my mind. Perhaps it is because I am weak from my wound. Aren't I always? Amanda Blake was an iconic actress from the era of television dominated by gunslinging sheriffs and swinging saloon doors. A starlet on the silver screen, she was best known for her role as Miss Kitty Russell on TV's Gunsmoke and her work as an animal activist and breeder. Her philanthropic endeavors cemented the actress as a rare selfless breed in Hollywood. However, with a complicated medical history worsened by outdated notions and stigmas, Amanda Blake's death shocked the public and upset the political sphere of the 1980s. Today, we will remember the pivotal role Amanda Blake played in the trajectory of the television industry. To fully comprehend the scope of her influence and the tragic implications of her death, we must first explore the origins of her career. Amanda Blake's Early Life Amanda Blake was born Beverly Louise Neal in Buffalo, New York, on February 20, 1929. She was Jesse and Louise Neal's only child. Her father was a banker, and the family maintained a relatively quiet existence. Interestingly, one of Amanda's ancestors was Kate Berry, the Revolutionary War heroine who played a crucial role in the pivotal win at Yorktown, warning local patriots of the encroaching British troops threatening their victory at the Battle of Cowpens. Not much about the actress's early years is known as the Blake family kept a relatively low profile. Amanda debuted in a Buffalo pageant when she was 10 years old. Later, she studied acting at Buffalo Studio Club before moving with her parents to Gainesville in Georgia and settling in Claremont, California. She graduated from Claremont High School, and her parents disapproved of the aspiring actress's dreams of fame. We tried at that point to get Amanda to give up her career to find a nice young man and settle down and make us grandparents, Blake's mother said. But no, she said acting was in her blood, that acting was her life. She's dedicated to her career with a kind of fanaticism which is difficult for us to understand. But that's the fact, and we recognize it. Marriage has just no place in her present plan of progress. After graduating high school, Blake briefly worked as a telephone operator before attending Pomona College, where she studied acting. Blake realized she preferred acting in community theater productions to doing her homework. And this revelation commenced her acting career. Blake took on a full-time acting schedule. Throughout the 1940s, she participated in several summer stock productions in and around New England. Summer stock is a phrase that refers to the practice of producing theatrical performances, often musicals, during the summer season. These productions are commonly staged in outdoor theaters, barns, or other venues, allowing large-scale performances in a relaxed and festive atmosphere. Additionally, she continued to study theater acting and took up radio acting in Buffalo. Blake found her way to Hollywood, where Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer discovered and signed the aspiring star. They hoped she would become MGM's next Greer Garson, one of the most famous actresses of the 1940s. The comparison was complimentary, for Garson was a significant figure in Hollywood. Garson is remembered as one of the great actresses of Hollywood's golden age, known for her elegance, intelligence, and versatility. Her contributions to film and her memorable performances have left an indelible mark on cinema history. Remarkably, Garson would outlive the aspiring actress Amanda Blake. Up until this point, Amanda had maintained her birth name. However, after being signed to MGM, she officially switched from Beverly Neal to Amanda Blake, the latter feeling more snappy. This decision was likely made to create a distinct and memorable identity for her career in the entertainment industry. The name change from Beverly Neal to Amanda Blake helped to brand her as an actress and contributed to her recognition and success in film and television. In 1954, Blake married Don Whitman. The couple had only dated for one year before their wedding on August 22nd. Not much is known of Whitman besides the fact that the couple divorced in 1956. Amanda played Faith Radmore Samuels in her debut film appearance, Stars in My Crown, 1950. The movie stars Joel McCree as a compassionate and conscientious preacher named Josiah Gray, who becomes the moral backbone of a small southern town named Walesburg in the late 19th century. It also served as Blake's introduction to Western films. 
which would become an inseparable part of her identity as an actress. She appeared in nearly a dozen movies and television episodes, such as the starring role in Miss Robin Crusoe, 1954, Cattle Town, 1952, and A Star is Born, 1954. However, Amanda Blake was only beginning, and in 1955, she would land the role that would change her life. Amanda Blake finds fame on Gunsmoke. Amanda scored the role of Miss Kitty Russell in TV's Gunsmoke. Russell was the sassy, lovable proprietor of the Long Branch Saloon in Dodge City. She starred alongside James Arness, who played Marshal Matt Dillon. In 1971, Amanda reveled in an interview, I knew I had to have the part of Kitty. She continued, so I hounded the producer until I got it. Amanda Blake shared her gift with the world on Gunsmoke for the next 19 years. It was the longest running Western program on TV, airing 569 episodes in total. Gunsmoke was well produced, with high production values for its time. The sets, costumes, and cinematography contributed to the show's immersive atmosphere, transporting viewers to the rugged landscapes of the Old West. Marshal Matt Dillon, portrayed by James Arness, was the stoic and honorable lawman at the center of the series. At the same time, other characters, such as Miss Kitty and Doc Adams, added depth and nuance to the narrative. Blake's portrayal of Kitty Russell is widely attributed to Gunsmoke's success. I very early decided what I wanted most was to become an actress, a fine actress, a good actress, to play different parts in different worlds, she said. I hardly ever thought of a marriage and a husband and children. After her 1956 divorce from Don Whitman, Blake found solace on the set of Gunsmoke. According to reports, the actress spent much of her free time on the saloon set of the show in the months following her divorce. Reports indicate that the set felt like home to her while offering some semblance of escapism. When the show ends, I'll have them pack up that set and move it out here. I don't know what I'd do without it. And besides, the bar is practical. After her divorce, Blake focused on her acting. Gunsmoke was a bona fide hit, and Kitty Russell was a household name. However, the actress faced criticism from fans and critics alike, who condemned Blake's status as a single woman. Many even questioned how the hit show's leading lady could live a manless life. In an expertly crafted response that maintains profundity today, Blake replied, when a little girl recognizes me in the street and asks for my autograph, even today after six years of being on the show, I get a bigger thrill out of that than when a man says, darling, you look lovely. Gunsmoke would become a legendary television program. During its run, the show's fictional town of Dodge welcomed a litany of famous guest stars, such as Adam West, Harrison Ford, and William Shatner. One such guest star, Bette Davis, threw Amanda Blake off her game completely. According to Pam Palafroni, the show's casting director, Blake was scared to death to work with someone as famous as Davis. Polyphrony has stated that she went out of her way to cast someone haunting enough to play the role. After Davis starred in the show, she and Blake remained close friends and colleagues. By 1957, Amanda Blake had become synonymous with celebrity status. Because of her packed filming schedule on Gunsmoke, she rarely had time for appearances in extracurricular films or shows. However, she made time for a guest appearance as Betty LaVon Coat in an episode of State Trooper in 1957. Additionally, she held a recurring comedy routine on The Red Skelton Show and made appearances on Hollywood Squares, Dean Martin's Celebrity Roast, Tattletales, and the 1970s revival of Match Game. In June of 1967, after only two months of dating, Blake married Frank Gilbert, a writer and producer with whom she shared a love of animals and entertainment. The following year, Amanda Blake was honored as the first female actor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame of Great Western Actors and Actresses in Oklahoma City. With Gilbert by her side, Blake felt empowered to shift her focus from the screen toward her emerging love of animals. The two spent time in Phoenix, Arizona, where they lived on an animal compound. The altered perspective prompted Blake to leave the town of Dodge to focus on Phoenix. Amanda Blake decided to leave the Gunsmoke cast after 19 years. Her final appearance was on April 1, 1974 in the episode, The Disciple. When speaking of her decision to leave, Blake said, I was tired and it was time to go. 
After her departure, Gunsmoke was canceled after 20 seasons on the air. However, Blake was unhappy with the network's decision. Even though she had recently decided to leave, when the news of the show's cancellation reached Amanda Blake, she was determined to change the showrunners' minds. As recorded by David R. Greenland, an author specializing in television programming in his book The Gunsmoke Chronicles. Amanda Blake was in New York shortly after the series was canceled. Riding past CBS headquarters, she remarked, I think I'll go in there and hit CBS president Bill Paley over the head with a brick bat. Amanda Blake's Devotion to Animal Rights One of the better known facts about Amanda Blake is the actress's legacy of advocating for animal welfare. One of the contributing factors to Blake's decision to leave the cast of Gunsmoke was that she'd recently moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and was tasked with commuting via plane to film the show. However, once she left, she could return to the animal compound operated by her and her then-husband, Frank Gilbert. Before leaving the show, Amanda Blake had infamously brought her pet lion, Chemo, to the set of Gunsmoke. Chemo was one of the actress's first philanthropic purchases. She has stated, I gave up my fur coats years ago. What an ego trip, walking around wearing cut-up animals. Besides, fur coats don't last, I'd rather have diamonds. Blake and Gilbert had driven with the animal from the Arizona compound, and when they arrived on set, the incident made headlines. The production crew was initially panicked. People were scattering like mad and just going bananas, Blake recalled. However, Chemo was a mere cub then, and Amanda Blake had him on a leash. Soon enough, the panic was replaced by what has been reported as a cuddle party, with Chemo even posing atop the saloon's bar for photos. When Blake and her co-star, James Arness, began filming a scene, they were quickly reminded of Chemo's presence, as the lion cub continually disturbed production with whines and mules. As a result, he was banned from the set. However, the distance between him and Blake wouldn't last long, as she left the show later that year. After she retired from Gunsmoke, Amanda Blake and Frank Gilbert brought Chemo back to Phoenix's Blake Gilbert Estate and Animal Compound. There, she and Gilbert ran an experimental breeding program for cheetahs, becoming one of the first to breed cheetahs in captivity successfully. They are so cute and frisky and lovely, Blake told the New York Times in 1975. You should see them rolling and bouncing around. Once they'd cracked the code, Blake and Gilbert bred seven generations of cheetahs at the four-acre compound, delivering several cubs to local zoological societies researching endangered animals. Charles Hosel, the former curator of the St. Louis Zoo, shared that Gilbert had been responsible for teaching the organization most of what it knew about cheetah upkeep. Gilbert and Blake had recently sold cheetah cubs to Hosel and the St. Louis Zoo, where the Cheetah Survival Center opened in 1978. According to Hussle, the St. Louis Zoo, along with counterparts globally, prioritized breeding endangered species. In 1973, to accommodate cheetahs, the zoo relocated its American buffalo herd and repurposed the area for the survival center. In 1975, in a feature article for People magazine, Blake provided an update on chemo who'd become a celebrity in his own right after visiting the Gunsmoke set. By the time of the interview, Kima was a whopping 400 pounds. In addition to her beloved lion, Blake owned a leopard, four smaller leopard cats, and 10 cheetahs. After an angry neighbor accused Blake and Gilbert of owning the animals illegally, the former Miss Kitty marched into the Arizona Fish and Game Commission offices and proudly presented all the valid permits needed to keep such animals. She later said, we don't want them as pets. Our goal is to keep them genetically as close to the origins as possible. Before Amanda Blake managed to do it, experts found the task of breeding the exceptionally speedy animals to be impossible. For example, female cheetahs don't show any clear signs of readiness when they can reproduce. As a result, they must mate with several males before producing any offspring. However, Blake managed to figure it out and her work with breeding cheetahs in captivity led to significant advancements in the effort to repopulate the cheetah species. Additionally, her efforts were recognized by the state of California, which opened the Amanda Blake Memorial Wildlife Refuge for African Wildlife in 1997. 
The refuge is located in Rancho Seco Park in Herald, California, and it provides a sanctuary for free-ranging hoofed African wildlife. Many of the animals rescued were fated initially to appear at unethical exotic animal auctions or immoral hunting farms. Amanda Blake frequently traveled to Africa in pursuit of more knowledge about wild cats and hoofed animals. While abroad, she criticized the continent's failure to protect wildlife. Africa is doing little to protect its most valuable assets, the wildlife. Some of the game wardens are poaching on the preserves they're hired to protect. Blake's experiences taught her about animal conservation efforts and assisted in founding AAWL, or the Arizona Animal Welfare League, in 1971. The organization remains the oldest and largest no-kill animal shelter in the state of Arizona. In 1985, Blake used her resources to fund the Performing Animal Welfare Society, or PAWS. This American rescue group claims over 30,000 abandoned or abused performing animals and victims of the exotic animal trade per year. The Association of Sanctuaries accredits the organization. In support of the Performing Animal Welfare Society, Blake devoted a significant amount of time and money, including her frequent visits to Africa. Amanda Blake's Medical Struggles. After leaving Gunsmoke in 1974, Amanda Blake entered semi-retirement alongside Chemo in Phoenix, Arizona. While in Phoenix, she lived on an animal compound alongside her husband, Frank Gilbert. Everything seemed to be going smoothly for the accomplished actress. However, in 1977, she would receive tragic news. Blake was diagnosed with oral cancer in 1977. She had been a heavy consumer of cigarettes throughout her life, typically smoking between two and three packs a day. However, the starlet was able to receive treatment in the form of oral surgery, which consequently saved her life. As a result of her experience, Blake became a stern advocate for the American Cancer Society. In an interview with a local publication from Madison, Blake explained that her fear of her situation was the worst part. The actress admitted that when she initially discovered that something was wrong, she was so paralyzed by fear that she refused to seek treatment. It started as a little blister, about the size of a pea, under my tongue. And it just wouldn't go away. I was terrified. I knew I had a problem, but I never told a soul. It would be three months before Blake had no choice but to seek help, for the growth had become unbearably painful. She went to a specialist who diagnosed her and she quit smoking at once. Determined to help others overcome the heart-stopping terror associated with a cancer diagnosis, Blake began advocating for the American Cancer Society and sharing her story publicly. In 1984, her efforts were recognized by former President Ronald Reagan. Blake was awarded the American Cancer Society's annual Courage Award in the Oval Office. Amanda Blake's fifth and final husband, Mark Spaeth, by 1982, Amanda Blake had divorced from Frank Gilbert. Only two years later, she remarried to Mark Spaeth, a city councilman from Austin, Texas. Speth would become Blake's fifth and final husband. In addition to his political career, he also owned a real estate investment firm. Speth was elected to the council in 1983, and the couple married on April 28, 1984. After she married Speth, Blake appeared on television four more times, starring in The Edge of Night, Brothers Gunsmoke, Return to Dodge, and The New Dragnet. On April 27, 1985, Mark Spaeth filed for divorce on the couple's marriage anniversary eve. Spaeth's petition cited discord or conflict of personalities, having led to the unsupportable state of their marriage. At the time, Spaeth had spent the majority of the past two years undergoing treatment for an undisclosed illness. Theories consequently skyrocketed about the nature of the councilman's disease and its relation to his failed marriage to Blake. He had not attended a council meeting for two months when his petition was filed. One month later, on May 27, 1985, Mark Spath died at Breckenridge Hospital due to complications from pneumonia. Shortly after his death, an issue of the Austin American Statesman publicized news that Spaeth's bout of pneumonia was due to the politician having AIDS. The AIDS epidemic emerged in the early 1980s and quickly grew into a global health crisis. 
affecting millions of people worldwide. During the early years of the epidemic, there was considerable fear and stigma surrounding AIDS due to the lack of understanding about its causes, transmission, and treatment. The virus was initially associated with specific groups, such as gay men, injecting drug users and hemophiliacs, leading to discrimination and social ostracism. Various factors, including inadequate access to healthcare, limited awareness about safe sex practices and needle sharing, and societal attitudes towards marginalized groups, fueled the spread of AIDS. The lack of effective treatment options in the epidemic's early stages also contributed to its rapid spread. As many felt uncomfortable with the subject of AIDS, it was uncommon for prominent members of society to show support for those affected. One of the few public figures who opposed this cruelty was Princess Diana, though she faced significant backlash for her activism. Once the news that AIDS caused his death was revealed, many labeled Spieth as a gay man, which was unheard of in the world of 1980s Texas politics. The news instantly attracted attention, controversy, and speculation. One article revealed that, in the early 1970s, Speth had been a regular at gay bars in Austin. The public's theories seemed to be confirmed by Speth's history of human rights advocacy. While working as a councilman, Speth frequently supported gay rights. Once the public caught wind of Speth's possible homosexuality, the largely homophobic sentiments upheld by the public effectively tarnished his legacy. Some anti-gay journalists even suggested that Spieth's marriage to Amanda Blake was driven solely by the closeted man's desire for the spotlight. Of course, these stories are not credible sources of information and were likely created to perpetuate a hateful agenda. Regardless of Spieth's sexual orientation, however, the public was now privy to the information that Amanda Blake, America's favorite red-headed saloon owner, was likely infected with the disease that killed her late ex-husband. On August 16, 1989, Amanda Blake died at Mercy General Hospital in Sacramento, California, at the age of 60 years old. It was initially reported by the media and believed by fans that Blake's cause of death was attributed to her previous battle with throat cancer. Additionally, for individuals left out of the Mark Speth debate, it was believed that her death was the reason for her leaving Gunsmoke. To further complicate things, the true details surrounding her death would later be revealed, leading many fans to speculate about whether or not Blake's colleagues, longtime friends, or ex-partners would attend her memorial services. A few months after her death, a report emerged from the Associated Press that confirmed some of the most horrific theories speculated by fans of the actress. Amanda Blake's actual cause of death was due to AIDS-related pneumonia, meaning that she died in the same way as Mark Spath. Dr. Lou Nishimura, an internist at the Sacramento Hospital, clarified that he had been treating Blake's symptoms related to acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, for over a year before her death. Nishimura was the individual who signed Blake's death certificate, which indicated the immediate cause of death as cardiopulmonary arrest due to liver failure and CMV hepatitis. According to Nishimura, how Blake contracted the virus remained unclear, though it was later believed to have been transferred from Spath. According to Jerry Ewan, a spokesperson for Mercy General Hospital, Blake's original cause of death was announced as a result of oral cancer after the actress's friends requested the actual cause stay hidden. While it remains unclear why they wanted the initial statement to allude to an alternate cause of death, it is likely due to the widespread stigmatization of AIDS patients and the AIDS epidemic, both of which ran rampant at the time of Blake's death. If the uproar caused by Speth's death was any indication, the actor's friends likely wanted to prevent backlash. Amanda Blake's remains were cremated and her ashes were given to her family for dispersion. At her request, her remains were scattered at a game preserve in Kenya by Roger Karras, a friend of the actress and ABC News wildlife correspondent. A Los Angeles memorial service was held for Blake on August 19, 1989. The event was put together by Blanche Davis, Blake's former manager. In possibly the only silver lining to the tragedy, Blake's memorial acted as a reunion for her former Gunsmoke co-stars, such as James Arness, Dennis Weaver, and Ruth Marsh, who spoke on Blake's behalf. Non-religious services were conducted at the Sacramento Garden Chapel on August 24, 1989. 
Blake's friends requested that attendees donate to the Amanda Blake Memorial Fund in care of the Farmers and Merchants Bank of Galt or to the local Humane Society in lieu of flowers. Even after her death, Amanda Blake encouraged selflessness and charity. Amanda Blake's Legacy After her death, Amanda Blake was remembered by fans as an avid animal rights activist, cancer supporter, and of course the remarkably talented, charismatic, and lovely actress who made an indelible mark on the world of television. Blake's portrayal of Miss Kitty, the feisty and independent owner of the Long Branch Saloon, made her a beloved figure in American television history. Her character was pivotal to the Gunsmoke's success and remains one of the most enduring and iconic characters in television westerns. Unlike many other western shows of its time, Gunsmoke aimed for a more realistic portrayal of life in the Old West. It depicted the harsh realities of frontier life, including violence, lawlessness, and moral ambiguity. The characters were complex and multidimensional, grappling with ethical dilemmas and personal struggles. Additionally, the show's characters were richly developed over the long run, allowing viewers to become deeply invested in their lives and relationships. Gunsmoke's lasting legacy is partly due to its social commentary. The series often tackled social issues and moral themes, exploring topics such as racism, prejudice, and the consequences of violence. The show's writers used the Western genre as a lens through which to examine broader societal issues, making it both entertaining and thought-provoking. Beyond her acting career, Amanda Blake was a passionate advocate for animal welfare. She was particularly devoted to the cause of animal rights and conservation, becoming one of the first individuals in history to breed cheetahs in captivity successfully. Most altruistically, Blake co-founded PAWS, or the Performing Animals Welfare Society, in 1971, which remains a powerful organization dedicated to protecting exotic wildlife, particularly those in captivity, and promoting compassionate and ethical treatment of animals. Her philanthropic endeavors extended beyond animal advocacy. When she was diagnosed with and successfully treated for oral cancer, she used her platform to share support, awareness, and information with the public. Her ability to connect with ordinary members of society while at the heights of celebrity remains unparalleled. It's a good feeling to be able to help when help is needed. That's one reason I also went into politics. But by politics, I don't mean the smoke-filled room sense, but simply being active in community affairs. Blake's career-founding role as Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke cemented her star power and entranced a generation of television viewers. The character challenged traditional gender roles of the time, presenting a strong, independent woman in a male-dominated genre. Miss Kitty inspired many female viewers and remains an enduring symbol of strength and resilience. The tragic nature of the actress's death serves as a reminder to practice empathy and follow in Amanda Blake's footsteps. Much of her legacy stems from her unwavering humility, grace, and perseverance. Her respect for all living things is truly admirable. Despite her passing in 1989, Amanda Blake's legacy lives on through her iconic television role, advocacy for animals, and philanthropic work. She is remembered for her talent as an actress and her compassion and dedication to making the world a better place. Her work has paved the way for contemporary activists and actors, and several organizations, such as the Performing Animal Welfare Society, maintain her influence. Gunsmoke effectively reshaped the Western genre and showcased a firm female business owner who had never debuted on television. Additionally, Blake's generosity and compassion have inspired generations, encouraging individuals with a platform to use their resources for good. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, check out one of the other videos you see on your screen to continue on your ultimate expedition. You won't want to miss it.